and welcome to my day 13 of Vlogmas video. So it's actually still day 12 here at the moment. So it's still Tuesday the 12th of December, but it's quite late in the evening here. My children are in bed and my husband is having to work late this evening. So he's upstairs in his office. And so I'm gonna start cutting into a new sewing project this evening. So I thought since I'm down here on my own, it might be nice to have a bit of company. So I thought I'd come on and start my day 13 video a little early. Um, and share with you what I'm planning to get up to this evening. So this evening, or I should mention actually before I start talking about that, um, in case you're wondering, I'm not wearing anything handmade at the moment. Um, I've changed into some loungewear, but my uh, Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweatshirt, my pink one that I've been wearing the last few nights, has gone in the wash. It's now drying. So I've got on this older ready to wear sweatshirt, which is also nice and cosy. But yeah, nothing handmade this evening. But yes, what I'm planning to sew this evening is a sewing project that's just, the sort of need for it has just come up over the last few days when my son came home from school with some holes in the knee of his PE joggers. So we've got two pairs of PE joggers, um, both I made, um, and they're, this is one pair here, the pair that needs replacing. So I made them the school royal blue colour. And I think he's had a couple of little holes in the knee of this pair for a while, but they're now getting to the point where they're getting a bit bigger. And I think they need replacing so that you can see the holes. He has got one good pair that he's still able to wear at the moment. But I thought over the Christmas holidays, it'll be good to cut out a new pair to replace these. And then by the time he goes back to school in January, he's got two pairs, which is quite handy because um, he needs to wear them several days in the week. And I do find they get dirty quite quickly. So it's nice to be able to have two pairs, one that I can put in the wash while he's wearing the other pair. So yeah, that is the plan for this evening to get a new pair cut out. And the pattern I'm using um, to, to make another pair of these joggers, you'll probably already know, it is the mini Hudson pants pattern by True Bias, which is a pattern I feel like I make quite regularly. My son really enjoys wearing them both for his, as part of his PE kit and also out of school. And actually my daughter's been wearing hers quite a lot in this colder weather as well, the pairs I've made for out of school for her too. So yeah, it's a pattern I've made quite a lot. Um, so yeah, that is the plan to get a new pair cut out for him. So I've got the fabric already and um, I had it in my sort of fabric stash. I bought quite a large amount of this fabric a while ago because I knew I'd be making a few more pairs um, in the future at some point. So I thought it'd be good to have it in stock. So it is a quite a lightweight French terry fabric in the school royal blue. And I quite like it being quite a lightweight fabric because I know when they're at school running around, they do get quite hot. So I think a lightweight fabric works better than something too thick they'd end up overheating in. So. Yeah, that's why I usually make the Hudson pants. It does mean the knees do wear through, but I'd rather my son was comfortable and not too hot, even if the knees do get worn through. So yeah, that is what I'm going to cut into. So I've got all the pattern pieces in this plastic A5 size wallet here. And I use these um, A5 size plastic wallets for patterns where I don't have so many pieces. They fit quite neat, neat, nicely into this size. Some of my patterns, like my PDF ones, I do store in like a larger um, A4 size. But for the mini Hudson pants pattern, I never actually ended up printing out the pattern instructions. I think when I first started sewing, I just got it up on my computer screen. And then now I don't usually bother getting the pattern instructions up at all because it's one of those patterns where I've sewn it so many times that I don't feel like I need the instructions. I kind of know what I'm doing. So yeah, I never needed to print those out. So all I've got in this folder is, and basically I've got the original pattern pieces that I must've got printed out. I think it looks like I might have got print them printed out by Fabuloso because I know they print on this sort of lightweight sort of tissue paper, which I quite like. So this is the original um, with all the sizes on. And then whenever I need to, I trace off a new size and have traced off quite a few sizes. Um, so there are quite a few sizes in here, even though it looks like quite a thin envelope um, because I have made quite a few different sizes for my children over the years. So it often takes me a bit of time to gather all the pieces in the right size. Um, I think my son is um, in the age 10 now, which I think might be the largest age for the mini Hudson pants. So he's definitely getting to the top end of them. So I need to find all the age 10 pattern pieces and then get them all cut out. So yeah, that is my plan this evening. So I think in a moment, I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and maybe get a little bit of chocolate as a nice sort of sewing or cutting out snack and get on with that. And then I don't think I'll probably sew them up during Vlogmas, I'll probably leave them for later in the Christmas holidays because I want to get on with um, sewing a few more exciting projects, particularly I want to finish my DD pullover next. Um, but I thought I'd rather 
finish that in the daytime when I'm a bit more sort of lively and can think definitely about how long I want it and make those sort of important decisions. So, but I thought this was a nice, easy project to work on later in the evening where I didn't need to think too hard. So yeah, that is the plan. So I'll finish off this little bit of the video here, I think, and get on with that cutting out project. Um, and I'll see you again in the morning, actually for day 13. Um, Elf is very quiet at the moment. He's looking very sweet and innocent and just having a little relax on the sofa. So yes, um, you never know that he's going to be up and doing something, goodness knows what, a bit later. So I wonder what he's got planned tonight. I'm sure, even though he's looking fairly chilled, I'm sure he's scheming. Um, so yes, I'll leave, um, finish off here and I'll say goodnight now. And then I'll see you um, tomorrow morning to share what Elf did get up to and just generally my day 13 day. So yes, I will see you again shortly. Um, bye. Good morning. Welcome to day 13 of Vlogmas. So it is actually Wednesday the 13th of December now and it's late morning here at the moment and I've been out this morning. I went up into town to run a few errands so I got those all done and it wasn't the nicest weather actually in town today. It's quite grey outside today and the rain was sort of that drizzly rain, quite light rain where you don't think you're getting that wet and then when you go inside you realise you're a bit more wet than you think but anyway I got all my errands done but I'm quite pleased to be back home now so I thought I'd catch up on here. So yes, as ever, I will start off with what we found Elf up to when we came down this morning. And when we came down this morning, we found that Elf had built himself a little house in our front room. He'd used some of our sofa cushions and then he would found a little fleecy blanket to make a roof. And inside he'd set up quite a cute little tea party. He'd found a little blanket and invited what looked like a few of his close friends. It was quite an intimate little tea party. And he was serving tea and cakes and it looked rather nice. Um, my daughter said that's adorable. So I think she thought it was quite a cute um, little party that Elf had set up there. So unfortunately, I've had to deconstruct Elf's house slightly because I needed the sofa cushion on this sofa to be able to sit here and do this video. So I'm looking down. Elf and his friends are still down here on the floor, but they've only got half a house left. But they still look like they're quite happy um, having their tea and cake. So, yeah, not a bad life for Elf today. So yeah, that is what Elf was up to in the night. And then what I'm wearing today is a handmade blouse and a handmade skirt. And I thought I'd pop on a blouse today because I haven't reached for a blouse anytime recently. They're not the things that get used most in my wardrobe. I guess they're not um, the cosiest thing and the weather has been quite cold, but today's a bit milder. So I thought it'd be a good time to get one out. And I really, really love this blouse pattern that I'm wearing today. It's a pattern that came from this magazine here, which is Fibre Mood magazine issue number 16. I think the DD pullover actually came from the next one, um, issue number 17. But whereas for the DD, I just bought the PDF just for that particular pattern. I bought this magazine because there are a couple of patterns I really like the look of in here. So I thought it was worthwhile to buy the magazine. And also, I was kind of curious as to what a Five Mood magazine was like. So I've quite enjoyed a few times just getting it open, having a little leaf through and looking at all the pictures and the information inside. So, yes, the pattern comes from here and it's the Ermine blouse. I'll pull it up so you can see. Um, this is the Amin blouse here. So it's a woven blouse pattern um, with this round neck that's finished with bias binding and then a button down front. Then it's got a little yoke at the back with gathering underneath, which creates sort of like a billowy effect at the back. And at the front, what I particularly liked, I thought this really pretty feature here was this um, sort of V-shaped yoke with gathering at each side. I thought I really like that detail and it's got quite a simple sleeve just with a sort of turned up hem, no cuff or anything like that. And it has like a relaxed fit to it. So for this one, my measurements would put me at the top end of the extra small um, and I went for the extra small and there's plenty of room in this one. But yeah, it's a really lovely blouse pattern. I think the details are really pretty. Um, the version I'm wearing today, the fabric is quite busy so you can't see the, um, the details very easily on the screen. Um, but I made it in this lovely viscose chalet fabric that came from Minerva. I'm not sure if this one's still in stock or have a check and if it is, I'll link it down below. I think it came in a few colourways. I think there might have been a mustard colourway too and then possibly like a greeny or a bluey one. But I thought it was quite pretty with these little, this little dark red colour background and these little blue and white flowers, quite like a ditzy floral. And I added on little blue buttons to sort of go with a little blue in the flowers. And yeah, it came together really nicely and it's quite a nice comfy one to wear. And it feels like quite a relaxed blouse, I think, because it doesn't have the collar and it has just the loose sleeves. So I feel like it's one that you can kind of, you could dress up, but you can also wear dressed down quite easily like I am today. 
So that is what I've, I've got on top. Um, yeah, I just really love this um, in blouse. I've got two of them now and I can see myself making more in the future. I really should wear them more because actually really comfy. And then the skirt that I'm wearing with this blouse, I'll stand up a bit so you can see it first of all. This is one of my favourite skirts that I've made. I really love this one um, and I do get it out quite a lot. So you might have heard me talk about it before, but I made it using this pattern here, which is the Brumby skirt pattern by Megan Nielsen Patterns. So it's a gathered skirt with this contoured waistband. And then at the back, there's an exposed zipper, which is quite a nice detail. Um, yeah, it sits at your natural waist and you can make it in three different styles. There's a kind of classic denim skirt style like the model's wearing on the front here or a longer sort of midi length I think it is style or um, version three just like a basic gathered skirt without these pockets but yeah my version is pretty much this version that the model is wearing on the packet it's a denim version I made in quite a sort of um it's quite a substantial denim it's definitely kind of like a heavier weight denim so it really holds the shape I think um and I did all the top stitching in like a classic uh, mustard color as well so you can really see it because I like how the top stitching runs down the front here and around the pockets. I think they're really nice details. And yeah, just really enjoy wearing this skirt. I find it goes with so many things. It's really nice and comfy. I think I went um, with a size of four when I made this, which is um, exactly my measurements on the waist and hips, waist 26 inches and hips 36 inches. And it fits so nicely. Um, it's not too tight, not too loose. It's just perfect. So I love this skirt. Um, I'll turn around a bit so you can see the exposed zipper as well, because I think that's a really nice detail of this pattern and makes it a bit different other skirt patterns. Hopefully you can see that there. Um, but yeah, I love this skirt. Um, it's actually one of my earlier makes and I made it uh, before I had my overlocker. So all of the raw edges have been zigzagged using my sewing machine. Um, and th luckily they seem to be holding up quite well. I guess because it's a skirt, I don't have to wash it as much as I would do a top. So yeah, because I guess going through the washing machine probably isn't the best for seams that have finished the zigzag compared to an overlocker. They wouldn't hold up quite as well. Um, but it has been washed um, still um, a fair few times because I have worn it a lot and it's still really holding up well. So I'm glad because I love this skirt and I don't ever want it to wear out. So <laughs> that is what I've got on with my blouse. And I think they look quite nice together. I'll put a picture up so you can see how they go. So yes, that is what I'm wearing today. And then I wanted to share one little crafty item which I bought when I was in town. It isn't the most exciting purchase ever, but I bought myself some white double knit wool because my son requested um, for me to make a few more knitted sheep to add to our nativity. So we've got three um, little knitted sheep in white and then one pink one that Elf knitted. Um, and yes, I'd run out of the white wool that I need for the head and the legs. I've still got the sort of white fluffy wool that you need for the bodies. I'll grab one of them actually so you can see um, the little sheep. So here is one of them. So you use kind of this fluffy yarn for the body which actually is quite tricky to knit because you really can't see what you're doing with all the fluff um so you have to be really careful you're catching the stitches but then the head and the um, legs are just made in plain white yarn and I'd run out of that so yeah just got a nice ball of white double knit um so I can make some more of those sheep I don't know when I'm going to do that it's just something that I may get started in the evening when I'm in the mood for that so yeah not a very exciting purchase but nice to have that now because I think I'd run out of my white wool it's obviously a colour I use more than some of my other colours so yeah I got that and then in terms of my plans for today, um, well, I've got a bit of a shorter day today because at school there is a sort of curriculum event later where you can go along into the children's classrooms and see some things they've been working on. So I'm going to have to head up to school pick up a little bit earlier than I normally would. And I've obviously been in town, so the morning's already nearly over. But I am hoping to do a little bit more on my DD pullover today. I'd really like to at least get the cuffs in, if not the hem band. Just to progress it a little bit more, I would like to finish it sooner rather than later because I feel like I have been working on it um, for a few days now. So I'm hoping to do that, but I will finish off here now and I'll catch up with you a little later. Oh, and while I was in town earlier, I took a few little videos in town. In particular, there's a lovely um, crocheted Christmas tree. I think it's been up in years before and they've added, added to it more presents at the bottom and all sorts. It's very, very pretty. So I took a little video of that to show you. And I also just cut to a couple of other videos um, I thought you might be interested to see some of the older buildings in town because there are some quite old buildings down one particular road in town. So I took a little video of those too, in case you fancied seeing. So I'll leave you with those videos of a, quite a grey day in town and I'll catch up with you again a little bit later. So see you in a bit. Bye. <laughs>
again now and it's the afternoon here now and I've been quite busy since I left you earlier. I had a few house jobs to do and I had some lunch and I've also been doing some sewing of my Fibre Mood DD pullover like I was hoping to. So I thought I'd pop back on now and share with you how I've been getting on. But before I talk about my DD pullover, I wanted to talk about something that I forgot to share earlier. Um, I was going to mention it earlier and I totally forgot. And it's related to my Fibre Mood Tanita top. So it's quite a Fibre Mood day today actually, <laughs> because my I mean blouse and the DD pullover and the Tanita top. I haven't made that many Fibre Mood patterns, I just happen to be talking about them all today. But yes, this is my Fibre Mood Tanita top, which I altered earlier in Vlogmas to take the elastic out of the hem. And then I used the extra fabric that was sort of left included in the hem to lengthen it a bit and finished it with this bias tape on the inside. Just lengthen it slightly and make it a bit more wearable. And I like it a lot better now. But when I did that, it, I was left with quite a lot of stitching marks towards the bottom of the garment um, from the previous hem. It was like some machine stitching lines and they were quite obvious, I thought. So I popped this in the washing machine because I was hoping that if I popped in the washing machine, the fabric and the sort of fibres would relax a little bit and flatten out and hopefully sort of iron those holes out a little bit. And I'm pleased to report it did work. So yeah, now um, it looks good as new. Um, you wouldn't be able to see that there were any um, previous sort of lines of stitching there or any sort of, sort of gathering and rucking from the elastic or anything. Um, it does need an iron, um, so it's not that perfect, but I'm going to iron it um, and pop it in my wardrobe ready to wear. So yeah, I'm glad to have that all sorted. I'm really glad that sort of those sort of lines of stitching aren't showing anymore. So it's definitely a good idea to put it through the wash. So I'm glad I did that. So yeah, I thought I'd share that first. And then I also wanted to share that I finished my um, DD pullover. So yeah, I'm really pleased about that. Um, all I needed to do, as you'll know, was to attach the cuffs and the bottom band and they're all attached now. So for the cuffs, because this fabric's a bit more bulky and a bit less stretchy than a ribbing fabric, um, which I think the sort of pattern piece was intended for, I ended up widening the pattern piece by an inch. And that seems to have done the trick and the, the cuffs went in okay. Um, and my, oh, my, my overlocker, definitely, it hasn't been my overlocker's favourite fabric, this fabric, particularly when it comes to when you've got three layers, of when you've got the two layers from the cuff and then the, and the actual sleeve that you're attaching all together. And the fluff, it was really struggling to kind of get through it. Um, but it did manage just about. But what I did do for the um, cuffs was... I actually basted the cuff together um, using my sewing machine, just with like a long stitch before I then attached it to the sleeve, a bit like I did with the collar, just to make sure all three layers were definitely kind of held in place a bit better and I didn't miss any of them. But yes, my overlock had just about got through it and they've attached on and I quite like them. They're sort of, they're sort of snug cuffs, but not like super tight. Um, so yes, and I was pleased with the sleeve length. I'd lengthen the sleeves by, I think, an inch and a quarter and that's worked out quite well. It's quite a nice length for me, so that's good. And then for the hem, I also um, lengthened the pattern piece by an inch, but you actually cut two um, pieces of the hem and then sort of sew them each side. So I guess the total, sorry, the total extra width I've added is two inches um, by sort of widening those, those, that pattern piece. And that worked well too. Again, I had to kind of stretch it quite a bit to fit it onto the body, but it did, it did stretch that much and go on nicely. Um, and actually, I tried it on. I sort of pinned it on to start with and tried it on. And I found the sweatshirt was feeling a little bit long and I had lengthened it by an inch. So I ended up sort of taking off half an inch and then attaching it and attaching it properly just because I felt like it needed to be a little bit shorter. So at the end, final sweatshirt is only half an inch longer than the pattern piece for the main body. Um, but yes, um, and with this one, I didn't base the two pieces together. I just thought it's, it's quite a big piece. I'm just going to put loads and loads of clips on and hope for the best. Um, and my overlocker, um, yeah, worked really hard to get through it and did get all the way around. So yeah, it's all done and dusted now. So yes, it's still still some fluff is coming off it. And I did just hoover again because um, every time I work on this fabric, the floor does get quite covered with fluff and I've got it in my hair. I've probably still got some in my hair somewhere. Um, but yes, I'm sure it'll be fluffing and there'll be pieces around the house for a little bit longer to come. But, um, but yeah, I'm really glad it's finished. And I'm hoping either this afternoon or tomorrow morning to get some photos of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. So yes, I'll aim to do that and then I'll be able to include that in tomorrow's video all being well. But yeah, I really enjoyed sewing this pattern actually. Um, and I think the main, uh, the zip actually went in better than I was expecting. I think the main challenge um, with it has been just sewing the fleecy fabrics. It's quite bulky. Um, but yeah, so I'm glad it is done and I'm looking forward to being able to wear it. So, and yeah, I did enjoy it. I definitely would 
make this pattern again. But yes, I'll get some photos so I can hopefully share how it looks on tomorrow. So yes, I think I'll finish off this video here now because it won't be too long before I need to head up to school for the event that's happening um, this afternoon there. So thank you so much for joining me for another day of Vlogmas and I'll look forward to seeing you for Thursday, day 14 tomorrow. I hope you're having a good week and I'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye.